Welcome everybody uh, to the virtual village hall. I hope that you're all um, looking forward to today's session. So this is a Silver Swans ballet class. Um, I'll just explain a little bit about Silver Swans just while we're waiting for, um, yes, great. I've got the first comment to say it's all working. Thank you, Wendy. Um, so we were just, um, I was just explaining a little bit about Silver Swans. So Silver Swans ballet classes are specially designed for the over 55s. Um, very gentle classes. Um, I'm a Silver Swans licensee um, at the Janet Loma School of Dancing in Bury. I've been teaching Silver Swans since its initial pilot back in 2017. Um, Silver Swans uh, just is just amazing. Um, you know, the, it's it's exercising without realizing that you're exercising and it's you know you can still enjoy. We still it's still a proper ballet class. You know, we still do our bar work centre work but we also always do a little bit of repertoire so as part of today's session we're actually going to be doing a little bit of repertoire from the ballet Capelia, uh, which is such a lovely ballet it's one of my favorites i always recommend that if you've never seen a ballet if you've never seen a ballet before my recommendation is to watch Capelia or la female garde so hopefully today a little bit of a taster of um Capelia. Um, hopefully you'll enjoy that um for the session, you'll need something to use as a ballet bar. So something nice and sturdy. I use a dining room chair, um, just something that won't wobble over. You've also got some water as well. And just check that the space around you is nice and clear of any obstacles. Um, don't want to trip over anything. Check that the dog's out of the way and things like that. Um, and uh, I think that's pretty much everything. Um, right, so we will get started. Right. Let's get going. Let me just, uh, I think my camera's pretty much ready. So we always start off with two warm-ups to begin with for our Silver Swans classes. Um, nice and easy. The first one is just following along. We're just walking around. If you haven't got enough space to walk around your room, you can just walk on the spot if needs be. Okay, so let's get started then with our warm-up. Very sorry, my speaker has just timed itself out. <laughs> right, okay, all sorted now. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to walk around. Keep walking around. If you've not got enough space, then you can just walk on the spot. something nice and sturdy like a ballet bar so I'm just mindful of it's saying Silver Swans ballet classes at the um, bottom of the screen I just want it to make sure it's not going to hide my feet at all there we go I think that should be okay hopefully fingers crossed um, there we go right if it's any problems if you could just pop it in the chat please when when we actually come around to doing the exercises but I think it should be okay from what I can see on my screen. I'll move back this way a little bit more. Right, okay. So, we're going to start off with our second warm up now. So for this, we're facing our ballet bar. I'll just angle my chair around a little bit more for this. We're just with your feet together. And we're going to, this second warm up is more about the use of your feet. We're really getting our feet nice and warmed up. 
So we're going to go to our demi point. So a nice crease in your shoes, relaxing your toes. And then to a point, to your demi point and down. And then same with the other foot, demi point, to a point, demi point and down. Same on the other leg, to a point, demi point and down. So creasing your shoe, to a point, demi point and down. So I'm using the word there, demi point, demi meaning half. Because everything that we're doing in ballet is also in French. So it's demi point, half a pointed foot. Then we're just going to point our foot to the front. We're going to flex our foot and then we're going to point it and close and a point and flex and point and closing in. Same again and flex and point closing in, pointing and flexing and pointing closing in. Just before we begin, check that you're not too close to your ballet bar. If you're too close, your elbows are bent. If you're too far away, your elbows are straight. You want them just to be nice and relaxed. Okay, let's do our second warm up now, which is just for our feet. And demi point to a point, demi point and down, demi point to a point, demi point and down, demi point to a point. Make sure your shoe hands are really going through your feet. Now pointing and flexing, and pointing. showed fine on the screen I hope it did um okay um we're going to now do our first official exercise of the bar so we've done our two warm-ups we've got ourselves going now so I'm uh just gonna lose my jacket I'm nice and warm now um so our first official exercise at the bar that we have is called our plies so plie means to bend and it's just a nice gentle way to get ourselves started in the ballet class um, so I'll just start off though teaching you the positions of the feet in ballet. So if you start with your feet together, in, dance, in ballet we always work in turnouts. So if you turn out from your hips, it's the whole of your leg that's rotated outwards. So we've got feet in first position. Now that should be a nice comfy position. Watch your feet aren't too turned out. It should look like a, like a right angle really. Now if you put a little space between your feet, that's second position. You bring your feet back into first for one moment and now slide one foot in front so your heel of your foot is of your front foot is in contact with the middle of your back foot and that's third position and we can have third position with either foot in front so we've got first position second position and third position or you can have third position with the other foot in front as well so those are three of the five positions of ballet. So today's session is suitable for absolute beginners, so I am explaining everything from the start. But there you go, in the first five minutes, <laughs> you've just learned three of the five positions of the feet in ballet. So facing your ballet bar, just like I said, just check that you're not too close. We're going to start off with our demi plie. So just take a moment just to think about your posture. So lifting up nice and tall, nice long necks, relaxing your shoulders down. And we're going to bend our knees and stretch. So I'll just turn to face the camera so you can see. So I'm just bending and stretching. Bending and stretching. So I'm making like a diamond shape with my legs. My heels, your heels must stay in contact with the floor. Heels are down and then stretching. Okay, so we're going to take three demi plies in first. Demi plie and stretch. Demi plie and stretch. Demi plie and stretch. And then we're going to go to second position. So pointing your foot to the side. And we'll lower down in second. Same in second. Demi plie and stretch. So heels stay on the floor. Demi plie and stretch. And we want our knees to go over our middle toe. And stretch. Pointing, and we'll bring our foot in front into third. Same in third, demi plie. And stretch, keeping your shoulders nice and relaxed. Demi plie. And stretch. Another demi plie. And stretch. And then we'll close our feet back into first position. So we've done three plies in first, second, and third position. 
to finish off now we're just going to take try and use your right hand first but it doesn't matter whichever hand you use first so we're going to take our hand up we're going to circle it round and then put it back onto the bar so this is what we call a pour de bras taking your hand up circling it round and putting it back onto the ballet bar so we'll cover a pour de bras a little bit more in detail later on in the lesson but just know that pour de bras is just about moving your arms but i just thought we'd put that in just to keep everything nice and relaxed and quiet okay so let me just um make sure that everything's all set up yep there we go okay okay so let's take our plies now Now we'll go. 
go to the side. One, two, three, two, and then nice straight legs and strong legs and legs. Montandu's Devon and à la seconde. Now our next exercise is called Ronde de Jambe à terre. Very long title. Um, ronde meaning round, your jambe is your leg, à terre is on the ground. And these are, can be taken on the or which is going outwards, and on the don which is coming inwards. We're going to do both of them today. So feet in first position. Just check that you've got enough space around you because you are going to be using your leg a uh, nice wide circle. So it's like with our where we were going for our Batman tondus, it's like we're going to play dot to dot, joining them all together. So I'm pointing my foot to the front, it stays pointed. Now it's going to circle round to the side, but I'm going to keep circling it round to the back and close it into first position. So if you imagine if you had a pen in the tip of your big toe, you would be making a capital letter D shape on the floor. So it's going forward to the side, keeping your legs nice and straight and closing in. Now we're going to take a rise and lower down. And as you take that rise, really think carefully about keeping your ankles in a nice straight line. It's helpful if you think of pushing a little bit more towards your big toes. What we don't want is going out onto your little toe because that will really weaken your ankles. So rising up, even just a little rise is absolutely fine, lowering down. And then we have a few counts just to think about our posture. So on those few counts, I want you to imagine that you're growing that little bit taller. Grow from the middle of your head. Imagine you're, it's lifting up to the ceiling. And then we'll go with the other leg. To the front and to the side, to the back, closing in, rising up and lowering down. And then we're going to lift and grow. Now we're going to reverse it in our rond de jambe on the dog. So instead of going to the front first, we're going to go to the back first. To the back, to the side, to the front, closing in, rising up and lowering down and lifting. Relax your shoulders or the leg to the back, to the side, to the front and into first, rising up and lowering down. And then we'll finish off that. Okay, so we've got one with each leg. We're going on the or, on the or, and then we're going on the dom, on the dom. We've got that little rise in the middle as well. And that opportunity just to take a moment in the exercise to just think about your posture. Okay, so just lifting up nice and tall. Like I said, imagine that you're growing through, you're trying to get the middle of your head to reach up and touch your ceiling. Okay. Feet in first position, ready for your rond de jambe à terre. Okay, I'm going to the front. Ooh, one, to the side, to the back, and into first. Rising up and down, and lifting nice and tall. Pull the leg front. And side and back, floating into front, rising up and down, lifting tall. Now going to the back, to the back. So this is your on the dog, which means coming inwards. And close, rising up and down, keep lifting up, relaxing your shoulders down. To the back, my straight legs. To the front, closing in, rising up and down and finishing. Okay, so we've had our plie, we've done our tondus, and we've just done rond de jambe à terre. Now we're going to finish off our bar work with a step called a grand batman. Now, grand batman is quite similar to, is kind of quite closely related to a batman tondu. So I'm going to do this exercise with one hand on the ballet bar now. Let me just move my chair up a little bit more. Okay, so just as we're standing at the bar now with one hand on, hopefully it should be nice and easy for following along with the video. 
Um, if you're using a chair like me, pop yourself just towards the back edge of your chair so that your hands can go in the middle of the chair. It's really useful to keep your hands in front of you to help with your balance and your posture. As soon as this arm starts to go even to the side of you, it's already started to pull the shoulder around. And if it goes behind you, then you can see how much it's twisted my shoulders there. So you want to keep that hand in front of you. Your other hand goes onto your waist and your elbow is pointing to the side. Again, if your elbow starts to point around the back, you can see it's happened with my shoulders again there. So we're wanting everything to stay nice and square. Your shoulders are square and your hips are absolutely square to the front. And you want your body to remain nice and still while you're doing this exercise. This is just all about your legs. And imagine your leg moving from your hip socket. Okay, so normally in a ballet class, whenever we do anything with one hand on the bar, we do it on one side with one leg, and then we turn around and repeat it on the other side with the other leg. But because uh, we're following along with a video, um, I've choreographed this exercise so that you can keep facing the camera all the time. So we're going to use our outside leg, your leg furthest away from your ballet bar, and your inside leg, your leg closest towards your ballet bar. So we're going to start off with our outside leg to begin with. I'll just go through the tracking of a grand back one. So we're pointing our foot to the front, and then this leg is going to do a little lift, and pointing, and closing in. And we want to have nice straight legs all the time. Pointing, lifting, pointing, and closing. Now, there were four points that we went through there. One, two, three, four. I want you to imagine that you've connected those first two together and it's going to go now swish point close so the point and close at the end still stays the same it's the opening bit that's changed swish and a point and close have a go with your other leg as well swish and a point and close and the swish and a point and close okay a useful piece of imagery for Grand Batman is think of an aeroplane. It goes along the runway before it takes off into the air. Okay, and that's like your leg. It has to run along. It has to go along the runway before it launches into the air. So just be careful of that with your because it passes through a Batman tundu just like we did at the bar, where it's going through a point before it lifts. Okay, so let's talk about the setting of the exercise now. So we're going to do three Grand Batmans with our outside leg. And then three grand back ones with our inside leg. So we're going to go swish and point and close and wait. Swish and a point and close and wait. One more and point and close and wait. Then just to relax your legs, we'll just take a plie and stretch. Now, same with the other leg. Swish and point and close and wait. And a swish and a point and close. And a swish and point and close. Demi plie, then we'll repeat it again. Okay, so it's up to you how many repetitions you do want to do. Um, and the, the height of your leg is set by you. Even if you want to just keep it just a tiny little bit off the floor, that's absolutely fine for a grand bat bon. Okay, so feet in first position, let's take our grand bat bons. <laughs> We've already packed in lots of exercises in that. So if you want to pop your ballet bar away, um, have a drink of water and then we'll come into the center. And our next exercise we're going to do is called a pour de bra. Okay, let me mind my chair out of the way. Oh, 
Okay, so, um, it would be great if you could write in the comments, please, whereabouts you're joining in from today. It would be lovely to hear from you. Um, have you done ballet before? Um, or is this your first experience of a ballet class? If so, I really hope that you're enjoying it. Um, so I did explain at the start of a lesson, I'll just quickly explain just while everyone's putting their uh, ballet bars away, um, that today's lesson at the end of the class, we're going to learn a little bit of repertoire um, based around the ballet of Coppelia. A really lovely ballet, um, one of my favourites. And uh, it's just, I thought it'd be nice, you know, it's a very, it's a very bright and happy um, ballet. And I thought it'd be nice, you know, particularly on a day like today when, when you know, the sun's starting to come out. Um, so, great, okay, right, I'll just have a little drink of my water. Okay. So, um, our next exercise, like I said, is called a pour de bras. Now, I did come, now, at the start of, of this class, we did talk a little bit about um, pour de bras. It was just, you know, we just kind of came up in our plies exercise. We talked about using our arms. We're going to go a little bit more in depth into that now because pour de bras can actually even be an exercise within itself. Pour de means carriage of and your bras is your arms. So this is the moment in the class where the dancer really focuses on their arms. So just like we have five positions of the feet in ballet, we also have five positions of the arms. Now we're got, not going to use all of them today. We're going to use bra bar, which is like a preparatory position. First, second and fifth position we're going to use today. We're just um, I'm missing out third and fourth today. So I'll just explain a little bit about that. So if you just stand with your feet in first position and your hands in a nice bra bar shape. So this is, like I say, it's like a preparatory position. I'll just come a bit closer to the screen so you can see. So I've got a nice round shape with my arms. They're an oval shape. My elbows are pointing straight out to the sides and my hands are about as wide apart as my face. But then I can keep my shoulders nice and open and relaxed. Okay, so this is called bra bar, which literally translates as arms low. Now, if you leave your hands in bra bar, keeping that same shape in your arms, we're going to lift them up so that it's opposite your waist. So elbows are still pointing to the side, shoulders are still nice and relaxed, and this is our first position. Now, if we open our arms out to the side, this is second position. Now, second position, I'll just turn to face the side to show you. I've not got my arms completely out to the side. They're just slightly curved in front. And this means that I'm keeping my weight forward, just like we were talking about at the bar, where as soon as your arms start to go behind you, it's gonna to start to throw your weight back, which will of course affect your balance. So arms are curved just a little bit in front of you. So bra bar, first position and second position. Now there is just fifth position that we need to learn as well. So if we go back to bra bar, going to first. Now, keeping your arms in exactly the same shape, we're going to take them all the way up to fifth position. My arms are just uh, disappearing off now. I'll just take a step back. So I'm going to take them all the way up to the top so it's exactly the same shape. Just make sure that your shoulders are on top, keep them nice and relaxed down, but lots of space at the side of your ears. And then we can open our arm out through second and back down to bra bar. Okay, so, Feet in first, let's just put that into a little bit of a setting. I'll do it, it does travel this setting, but I'll teach it you on the spot first of all. So hands in bra bar. We're going to take one hand to first, out to second, and then slowly down. Then the other hand to first, out to second, and slowly down. Then we're going to take both hands together to first, and then all the way up to fifth, opening out, and then they're going to come down to a position called demi-second. Demi-second is like you've got on a tutu and your hands are resting on the edge of your tutu. Okay. Now we're going to, I'll put that into a setting now where we're going to travel a little bit. But before I do, we need to learn how to do a classical walk. Now, when we're walking normally down the street, um, we're walking with our heel leading. As dancers, we walk with our big toe leading. So your foot is stretching in front and the tip of your big toe touches the floor and then it's going to ripple through. And then it touches your floor. I'll just turn the other way so that you can see my feet. <laughs> so we're walking and it's rippling through. 
and I'm stretching my foot and it's rippling through. And rippling, there's a slight bend on that back leg as well. It just gives me a little bit of a push as I'm going. So I'm going one and walking and walking. Okay, so that's what we call a classical walking ballet. So the setting of this exercise is actually going to make a zigzag shape in your house. Okay, so starting in the top back left corner. So imagine, think of like halfway down your room, we're going to aim to do the first half of the exercise to here. Then the second half of the exercise will travel down to this lower corner. So starting in this back corner, we'll begin with our feet in first and hands in bra bar. Just as we did in the center just now, we'll take our right hand out. One, two, three, lowering down. The other hand, one, two, three, lowering down. And both hands to the first, up to fifth, shoulders down, arms second, and then down to demi second. And we're going to now take three classical walks. Try and start with your right foot first. Right foot, left foot, right foot. As you close your feet into first, just take a little turn to face the other side that we're going to head towards. Now repeat it all with your left hand to begin. One, two, three, lowering down. And no one, two, three, lowering down. Both hands together. First, two, fifth, opening to second, down to demi second. So on the edge of your two, two. And left leg leads on this side. One, two, three, and then we'll just turn around and lower hands down to bra bar, okay? So, nice straightforward forward bra, I've got some classical walks in there as well. Um, remember that I teach these classes as a mirror image, okay? So always, if you listen out to the uh, right and left that I'm giving the directions for, you should be fine, okay? So feet in first, let's go with music for our forward de bra. Okay, relaxing your shoulders and right hand one, two, three, lowering down to brava. Other hand, left hand first, out to second, and slowly down. Now both hands together, arms first, up to fifth, shoulders down, arms second. To demi second, now it's three walks, right foot, one, two. Three and we'll turn on the side. One, two, three, and down. Now it's your right hand. One, two, three, lowering down. Now both hands to face. So that is our pour de bras, pour de bras, carriage of the arms. Okay, I'm going to move on to our piece of repertoire now. Um, now, the Ballet of Capelia, it would be great if you could write in the comments if you've ever seen the Ballet of Capelia. Um, it is beautiful, it's summery, it's just a very happy ballet. Um, it's all about a, um, a doll um, and uh, there's the two main characters, um, the man and the lady, um, the man sees this doll in the toy maker's uh, window and she looks so realistic um, that he falls in love with this doll. He really thinks he, he really loves this, uh, this doll who is just sat reading a book in the balcony of the toy maker's window. And um, the girlfriend becomes very, very jealous. And one night, um, uh, she decides to break into the toy maker's shop with all of her friends to find out exactly who this girl is. Because he's, it, this doll is so realistic that everybody thinks it's a real girl sat there. So they all break in. They discover that it's a doll. And, um, but unfortunately, that moment, the toy maker comes home and, uh, and finds them all. And all the friends scarf her, except for the lead girl. And she uh, actually then hides and puts on the doll's dress. 
Mummy well, does the hair also. The it's also the, the evening that her fiance decides to uh also try and break into the toy shop because he fancies meeting this girl um and the toy maker catches him he pretends to do a little bit of uh witchcraft and he thinks that he's giving this his spirit to this doll to turn this doll into real life what he doesn't know is that the lead girl has swapped clothes to try and wind up the uh, uh, the uh, the toy maker a little bit, and um, anyway, so she pretends that the dolls come to life. Uh, anyway, in the end, it all gets found out. Oh, it has a happy ending in the end. The mayor gives uh, the toy maker some money in compensation, and the two main characters do get married at the end. So it all sorts out fine in the end, but it is a very funny ballet. Um, Anyway, this ballet has a lot of mime in it, particularly this dance that we're going to do now. Um, it's a really, uh, uh, it's the open, It's one of the first meetings that we have of Swanilda, who is the main girl. Um, and this mime sequence, she's trying to draw down the doll from the balcony. She's desperate to find out who this girl is and why her fiance is really uh, so interested in her. Um, so this is the moment in the ballet, like I said, where she's trying to draw her down and we're getting very frustrated and you can see it in this dance. So it is a very long solo there. So I've reduced it down. And I've got, I've taken out the key parts of mine because I thought it'd be nice to do more of a focus on mine. So just before we begin, I'm going to, uh, we're going to do some mime. Um, there's a lot of mime in ballet, and if you can understand what this mime means, it really does help um, uh, with the story. So some of it's quite obvious, like for example, if I went like this, meaning love, or, um, and you can have a little bit of a guess along if you want to. Um, if we had somebody going like this, that's going to be marriage. Um, we would also have this. Is a, this is one that appears a lot in Romeo and Juliet and Sleeping Beauty as death. Um, and then another quite nice one is this, and that means to dance. Now, if you know that if if you see somebody do this in a ballet, you know that somebody is about to dance. <laughs> Um, we also have, that's quite an, a clear one as well, about a baby. Um, and also we have things like sleep. Uh, there's some really nice ones talking about eyes. But the ones that we're going to have in this ballet, we're going to um, gesture up to, the, um, up to the doll and we're going to say that she's reading a book. So you bring your hands together and open them out like you're going to read a book. But so we're telling the audience that the doll is going to read a book and then we keep and then we ask her to come down and also we're going to um we're going to get very frustrated with her <laughs> one of my favorite mimes i think is which means you go away um <laughs> we're going to do something similar to that um where we're going to take our hands and we'll Turn them up because we've uh, we, we've we've tried our very very best to ask her to come down, and she's just having there's just, there's just none of it. Okay, so we're going to start off in the corner of um, of our room in the lower corner. So if you, you want to instead of being at the back, if you just come a little bit further forward, and we're going to start off down in your lower corner, and we're going to walk on. So I want you to imagine that the balcony is up in that corner there and you can see she, and the doll is sat there, she's reading her book in the chair, you think she's a real girl at the minute. So we're going to walk on and stop with our feet in first and our hands in demi second. Using your left foot, I want you to imagine that you've got on a beautiful dress. Um, Swanilda's dress is just absolutely gorgeous, it's almost like a little bit of like a pinny kind of front, all embroidered and absolutely stunning. And she has a long skirt, like three four skirt, it's a very full skirt. So you can imagine that you've got hold of that skirt, we're going to stay, take a step with our left leg, and we're going to put our right foot at the back into on the ball of our foot because we're going to take a curtsy to her. Okay, so if you don't like putting your foot on the ball, you can always just put it flat into third and just take a bend and stretch. So we've made our entrance on, 
and we're going to take a step and look at her and you're going to take a curtsy because you're saying hello to her. Now we're going to point up to her, so up there, and then turn to your audience, hands together, and we're going to say that she's reading a book. Okay, so we've made our entrance up. So we're walking on. And we're stepping, and then we're going to curtsy. And she's up there, and she is reading a book. Now we're going to go round in a little circle past the balcony. And we're going to stop with our feet in first position in the middle. Okay, so let's have a go with up to there with music. Okay, so feet in first position. So like I said, we're just going to walk on and we're going to try and greet her. Um, and uh, hopefully she'll, we're trying to just get her attention. Okay, so we're walking on. And we're going to step and curtsy. Up there, she's reading a book. Coming into the middle, feet in first. Okay, so from here we're going to try and get her attention again because she just completely ignored us this first time. So we're going to try our curtsy again, so getting hold of your nice big skirt. So stepping and curtsying. But she's completely ignored you. Okay, so we've got up. Step and curtsy. She is reading a book coming into the middle stepping and curtsying now we're going to ask her to come down so if you take both hands up and we're going to bring our hands down so we've stepped and done a curtsy on one side now you're going to bring your hands up and we're going to step and curtsy as we bring our hands down as we're asking her would you like to come down but she's not going to listen to you. So we're going to bring our foot and we're going to stamp our foot. You can tell somebody's very naughty in ballet if you see that. Stamp our foot, put your hands onto your hips and we're going to walk away from her, pointing your foot in front, your left leg in front, and we're going to turn our hands up away from her because she's completely ignoring us. And you can see all these mimes within the ballet, within this Swan Elders variation. So we've walked on and step and curtsy you're trying to greet her she's up there she's reading her book and then coming round and into the middle try and greet her again step and curtsy and then you're going to ask her to come down but she's not doing so you're not very happy hands on your hips and then you're going to come down to the corner <sighs> Let's give it a go with music now. Okay, so walking on and step and curtsy. Up there, she's reading a book and going round into the middle. We're going to ask her again. Step and curtsy. And you're going to ask her, would she like to come down? But she's ignoring you. And we're going to go to the corner. Okay, very good. Right, let's finish off with our curtsy and cool down. Now, I really hope you enjoyed learning that little bit of mine from a ballet there. And when you see the Swan Elders variation, you'll understand what's going on in that in that ballet solo. Okay, so we'll finish off with our curtsy and cool down. We're combining them both together. So we're just following along when we're doing our cool down. When we get round to the curtsy section, just like we did in the dance, we can take a step to the side and curtsy and a step to the side and curtsy. If you'd rather not put your foot onto the demi point, you can just close your foot in at the back into that third position that we learned stepping and closing and bending okay so just following along feet together to begin <laughs>
and breathing out. enjoyed um, learning that little bit of mime today um, you know I said it, hopefully you know when you come to watch any ballets you'll pick out any little bits of mime lots of ballets have it in uh, one of the most famous ones is probably Sleeping Beauty there's a huge mime sequence when uh, Carabos is putting the curse on Aurora um, so yeah I hope you've enjoyed a little taster of Silver Swan's ballet classes today and um, like I did say you know just write in the comments if it's your first time doing ballet today it would be great to hear from you any questions pop them into the comments as well and I'll try and reply back to you okay I really hope you've enjoyed the session everybody bye <laughs>